Hello team, welcome back. In the last lecture, we have discussed the application of the RBAC. Today, we will see how we can implement the RBAC and how we can apply the RBAC on Kubernetes cluster. So let's just start with. So very first thing we need to know about RBAC will only work if you are using the Kubernetes cluster 1.9 plus, right? If you are using the Kubernetes cluster 1.8 or lower than 1.8, then RBAC is not useful for you because that Kubernetes cluster version don't have the RBAC feature inbuilt. So before going with this particular lecture and before using the RBAC in your production or test environment, please make sure you are using the Kubernetes cluster, which is 1.9 plus. RBAC is not enabled by default on the cluster. Suppose you have started the cluster, you have started the cluster on GCP, you have started the cluster on AWS or on a minikube, right? Then RBAC is not by default enabled on the cluster. Users need to enable that on the cluster. But before enable the RBAC on your cluster, you can verify the RBAC status by a command kubectl api hyphen versions. So what this will command do? This command will list out all the APIs which is enabled inside your Kubernetes cluster. If you had the API called RBAC Kubernetes cluster dot k8s.io, then it means RBAC is enabled on your machine. If that API is not listed in your API versions, it means RBAC is not enabled on your Kubernetes cluster and you need to enable it. You can enable the RBAC when you are starting your cluster. So if you are using the AWS or you are using the GCP, then you can execute one more parameter called hyphen hyphen authorization equals to RBAC. You can see I have provided the sample command over here, which is kops create cluster hyphen hyphen yes, hyphen hyphen state, define your state, which is S3 bucket, Define the zone where you want to deploy your Kubernetes cluster. Define the node size. I'm defining t2.micro. Define the master size. I'm defining t2.micro because this is free. Then I'm defining hyphen hyphen authorization equals to RBAC. Then I'm defining the name of my Kubernetes cluster. So I believe I don't need to explain this command again and again. We have executed this particular command multiple times in the previous lectures as well because in every lecture we are creating the AWS cluster. And if we are working on the existing AWS or GCP cluster, then it means we are all set. We just need to edit my cluster with this particular command and restart it. If you are using the minikube, then you need to start the minikube with this particular command. Minikube is start hyphen hyphen extra hyphen config equals to API server dot authorization dot mode equals to RBAC. One more thing I would like to mention. I'm not going to show this particular demo on the minikube because minikube is for the development environment and that will install on the single machine which is the developer's laptop or desktop right we need the actual implementation of the rbag when we are basically executing the kubernetes cluster on the aws and that cluster is being used by the multiple users so i'm going to explain the same thing on the cloud so i'm going to use the aws cloud and first i need to start my aws cloud with this particular hyphen hyphen authorization equals to RBAC parameter. Then I will verify kubectl API hyphen versions. Let's go to the terminal. I have already executing the AWS cluster. If you want, I can verify the status. So I'm executing the command kops validate cluster define my S3 bucket. You can see using cluster from kubectl context label 360 degree dot UK and my cluster is running. If I will execute a command kubectl API hyphen versions then it will list out all the APIs which is enabled on my cluster. And over here you can see I am getting rbac.authorization.k8s.iuv1 and rbac.authorization.k8s.iu.v1v1. These are the APIs which need to be enabled on your Kubernetes cluster if you want to use the RBAC, right? If API hyphen versions is not listing out these particular APIs, then you need to restart your cluster with the command hyphen hyphen authorization equals to RBAC. Let's clear out the console. Team, if you have any doubt, any question till now, then please let me know. Once you validate that the RBAC is enabled, what do you need to do? You need to create the namespace. If you are not using any namespace, you are just using the default one, then first you need to create a namespace. Then you need to create the rules for that particular namespace. Then you need to create the role bindings for that particular namespace. And this is the important thing which we need to do in this particular lecture. 
Till now, we are using admin config to log in Kubernetes cluster, right? But to log in with the new users which have the role based access, we need to create the cube config file and we need to set that particular context as well. So, what we need to do first, we need to generate the cute config file and I will apply it. So, let's go to the Visual Studio and over here I have created a file rbac hyphen user role. So, if you will go to the terminal and I will list out kubectl get namespace then you can see I have the three default namespace no custom namespace is present over here let's go back to the yaml again so in this particular file what I'm doing first I'm creating the namespace called my namespace right? this will be the name of my custom namespace right so first this particular manifest will execute and this will create a namespace named my namespace now I'm separating the another manifest and you can see here I have the another manifest which is called rules. So you can see the object type is role the API version I'm taking rbac hyphen authorization dot k8s dot iov1 metadata inside the metadata I'm defining the role name and my role name is Peter access. Then I'm defining the namespace on which namespace I want to create this particular role. Then you can see I'm defining few rules over here. In the rule first I'm defining the API group and I'm defining API group blank. It means all the resources which is coming inside the blank API group. They can be mentioned over here inside the resource tag. So if you remember then port doesn't have any API group port have the API group v1 which could be the blank. So inside the resources I'm defining pods. Then I'm defining verbs get watch list. It means as per this particular rule the user on which this particular role will be applied that can access the pods only in the Kubernetes cluster and inside the pod the user can only get the pod watch the pod and list down the pod otherwise user don't have any access to create anything. Let's add one more thing like create right the user can create the pod as well. Inside the rules you can define the multiple rule if you want to define this much of rule only then you can leave it. Otherwise, you can define more rules like this. I'm defining another API group here. I'm defining the extensions apps and inside the resources. I'm taking the deployment. It means inside this particular rule first I included the pod. Then I'm including the deployment. You can define the deployment here as well by comma separated, but I want to define different different kind of access for different different kind of resources. So these are the resources inside the Kubernetes pod is a resource deployment is a resource replica set is a resource secret is a resource right inside the resources and what are the actions this particular role have on this particular resource on the deployment the role Peter access can have the access like get list watch create and delete on the pod it only have the get watch list and create it don't have the delete permission. So this is the second object now third one is the role binding inside the role binding. I'm taking the object type role binding. Then I'm taking the API version rbac.authorization.k8s.iuv1 inside the metadata. I'm taking the name of my role binding, which is Peter role binding. Then I'm taking the namespace on which namespace I want to create it the same name the same namespace which I've been created over here. Then I'm taking the subjects C inside the subject. I'm taking user kind is user the name is Peter the name is space is my name is space and the API group is rbac dot authorization k test IO then I'm taking another tag which is role reference inside the role reference I'm defining the object type is role and defining the role name which I want to bind this particular user so I would like to bind the role Peter access see this is the role which I created with this particular access which have the username Peter and then I'm defining the API group. So this is the manifest first it will create the namespace then it will create the rule and then it will create the role binding till now we have not created the user. I will show you next how we can create the user first. Let's copy this manifest go to your cluster create a directory mkdir rbec go to the rbec over here. Let's create a file rbec hyphen role.yml and paste this particular file over here. Let's save this. 
now to execute this what i need to do i need to execute a command kubectl create hyphen f define my file name hit enter oh there's a mistake inside the create spelling hit enter and you can see i'm getting the message that namespace is being created the role is being created and the role binding is also being created let's clear out the console now what we need to do we need to create the user right and we need to provide the access of this particular role bind to that particular user for this we need to create the cube config file till now i'm using the admin cube config file if you will execute a command kubectl config get dash config sorry this should be get context then it will list out all the context so right now i have the two context one is the mini cube and second is my kubernetes cluster and asterisk means currently this context is being used so what we need to do if you want to create so what we need to do if you want to create a new user then we need to create the user right we need to set the context for that particular user and then we need to switch the context to use that particular user so inside our manifest file i have bound that particular rule to the user which have the name peter so over here i have listed down some commands what these particular commands will do first we need to retrieve the keys from keops right the ca certificate and the ca key then we need to create the user and then we need to add that particular user context inside the kubernetes cluster these are the things we need to do to execute that particular user called peter and see the effect which we have implemented so i will execute these particular commands one by one the first is aws s3 sync s3 then i'm defining my bucket name then i'm defining my cluster name then i'm defining pki private ca ca key you also need to execute the same command the difference is over here you need to define your own s3 bucket name and over here you need to define your own kubernetes cluster name hit enter so what this will do this will create the ca key for you see it has downloaded the key set yaml and created an key for you in the similar way i need to create the ca certificate as well for this i again need to execute the same command which i have mentioned over here you also need to do the same thing what you need to replace over here you need to replace my s3 bucket with your own s3 bucket name and my cluster name with your own cluster name this is my kubernetes cluster name level 360 degree dot uk hit enter and this will generate the ca certificate for this particular amazon s3 bucket put ls then you can see ca cert and ca key is being created right if you want to go to ca cert then you can go to the cert file put ls over here you have the certificate and key set ml if you want you can cat this particular file 67 certificate c this is the certificate clear out the console and if you want to verify the yaml then you can execute the yaml and if you want to cat the yaml then you can use the yaml as well which is keyset.yml this is the yaml let's clear out the console and exit out this particular directory execute pwd and you can see i am inside my rbac put ls i have the yaml file which i have generated then we have the ca cert and ca key now what we need to do we need to move all the things in a single key and single certificate so i will execute this particular command move ca key asterisk dot key it means move all the keys which is present inside this particular directory to this particular file hit enter right put ls you can see a new file is being created in the similar way i will execute this particular command move ca cert slash asterisk dot crt into CACRT. It means move all the certificate which is present inside this particular directory to a single file which is called CA certificate. Hit enter. Put ls. You can see CA cert and CA key is being created. If you want to see, you can cat this particular file like CA dot cert. Over here we have the cert file. In the similar way, you can clear out the console and cat the CA file. CA dot key. Over here we have the so we have generated the certificate and key for my s3 bucket 
now I can apply these certificate and these keys with any user which I want. I have configured the Peter inside my YAML. So I will configure these certificate and CA keys file for the Peter user. So next what we need to do, we need to install the open SSL on my machine. If open SSL is not installed your machine, you need to execute this particular command sudo apt install open SSL. Right, it's done. Now what you need to do, you need to execute this particular command. This is open SSL generate RSA out Peter dot 12048. This is the encoding. So what this will do, this will generate a PEM file called Peter dot PEM, which will be a RSA key. Hit enter. This is being generated. Hit LS. So you can see Peter dot PEM is being generated. If you will open it, Peter dot PEM, then see this is a private key. So we have generated an RSA private key. Put ls. So three things we have done till now. We have generated the certificate which I have downloaded from the AWS. I have generated the key which also have done it downloaded from the AWS and I have generated a private key on my system. You need to generate this private key on a system from which you want to access your Kubernetes cluster. I'm doing the same thing from the same machine because I don't have extra laptop. Right and on the extra system as well. First you need to install the KOPS and configure the KOPS with your AWS. Once Peter Pam is done, what you need to do? You need to execute this particular command. Let me show you what we are doing. We are saying open SSL request new key peter.pem out peter csr.pem and subject the CN equal to Peter and option equals to my team. Over here we are defining the username which I want to create. Hit enter. You can see on the root a RND file is being created. Now I will execute this particular command. What I'm doing over here inside the open SSL, I'm encoding this particular file, requesting the Peter CSR PM, defining the CA certificate which I have downloaded, CA key which I have downloaded from the Amazon, CA credentials out Peter cert days 10,000. It means it means this certificate will expire for this particular user after 10,000 days. Hit enter and all things are done. Right. Now what we need to do, we need to set a new config inside my Kubernetes cluster. So I need to execute this particular command. kubectl config set credential and now what we need to do, we need to set the credential for my user. So I'll execute this particular command and over here you can see I'm executing kubectl config set credential called Peter. This will be my username. Define your certificate which you want to use and define your POM file which you want to use, right? So I have defined all the things over here. Hit enter and you can see user Peter is set. It means user Peter is being created inside my Kubernetes. Now I need to set the context as well. So we'll execute this particular command kubectl config set context Peter define your username cluster define your cluster name hyphen hyphen user Peter. This will be my context name. I can I can name my context anything whatever I want right. If you want to define it Peter demo you can use it or you can name your context anything whatever you want right. Please make sure just user is defined over here. Otherwise you can take this particular string anything which you want. Hit enter and you can see new context Peter is being created. If I will clear out the console and again execute the same command kubectl config get contexts see a new context is being created over here. Auth info is Peter context name is Peter and cluster is level 360 degree dot UK. What access I have provided to my user see I have provided these particular access to my users. It can see the pods get watch list create and the deployment get list watch create delete. Right now I am on my context which is level 360 degree dot UK which is the admin context see address is here. If I will clear out the console and execute a command kubectl get nodes, then you can see I'm able to get all the nodes over here, right? But what if I will switch my context, right? It means if I will log in with my user Peter. So let's do this kubectl config 
use context and define your context name which is Peter hit enter you can see the context is being switched cube config context is being switched if I will execute the same command cube ctl get notes see I am getting the error I am getting error from the server forbidden node is forbidden user Peter cannot list resources node in API group it means the user which I'm using on my Kubernetes cluster. See, by switching the context, I have also switched the user. Right now, I'm logged in as a Peter. And as per the rules, Peter don't have the access to view the nodes so that I'm not able to get the nodes. If I will execute a command kubectl, get pods. Mm -mm. There's a mistake in the command. Let's correct it. Then you can see I'm getting the same error. If I will execute the same thing for the deployment, right, I'm also getting the same error. But you can see the error is I'm getting for the default namespace. If I will define the namespace like hyphen hyphen namespace equals to my namespace, which was the namespace which I have configured for the user. I'm getting no resource found. Same for the deployment I will get. Right? Use the deployment and define this. See, no resource found. Let's clear out the console. And execute the same thing for the replica set. Let's put kubectl get rs in the namespace, and you can see I will get the error. And error is error from the server forbidden access. User Peter can't list resources replica set in API group. Why? Because I have not defined the role for that particular resource. I have defined the role for deployment and for the pods only. Over here, I have created another file. You can see inside this particular file, I'm deploying some deployment, right? Which is using my namespace. And this is the nginx and three replicas. I will copy this, go to my terminal. Let's create the file vi deployments hyphen my namespace dot yml. Paste the file over here, close this. Let's do one thing, let's switch the context as well. Right, if you want, you can use the same context. Okay, let's keep the same context and execute it. kubectl create hyphen f and execute this particular file deployment yml. So, what this will do, this will deploy the three nodes of this particular container, which is called nginx. Right, as per the definition, this will deploy the three nodes. Let's execute the same command kubectl get pods namespace my namespace and you can see three pods are being listed over here now if i will execute a command kubectl config get context you can see i'm using the peter let's switch it kubectl config use context define the context which you want to use i want to use this hit enter uh, and this is saying kubectl okay there's a mistake in the command this should be kubectl hit enter and you can see the context is switched let's edit the deployment yml file and define the namespace default suppose i'm defining the same containers but in the default namespace save it and execute it kubectl create hyphen f deployment namespace.yml and you can see it is showing that deployment is being created if i will execute a command kubectl get pods then you can see there are three pods and they are running from 10 seconds but if you remember then we have executing the three pods of the same deployment in the another namespace as well and if you want to see these as well right then you can execute a command kubectl get pods hyphen capital A. It means keep the all namespaces false and show me all the details or all the pods which are running in all the namespaces. Hit enter and you can see we are getting a list of pods over here and see these are the pods which are running inside the default namespace which are just created. Nginx deployment and these are the pods which are running inside the my namespace which have been created five minutes ago. If I will clear out the console and again switch back to the context so i will use kubectl config use context peter 
context is being switched if i will execute a command kubectl get pods i need to define the namespace hyphen hyphen namespace equals to my namespace see i'm getting only three pods if i will execute the same command over here hyphen a hit enter then you can see this particular user don't have the permission right so we can see by the administrator we can view anything but by the default rules which we have assigned we don't have the permission to view all the resources so by this particular way we can limit out the role based access for the users right so team if you have any doubt any question then please let me know otherwise we are good to close this particular lecture so thank you team thanks for your time